So, um, very high profile presence from Audi always at Davos. What, what do you get out of it? I guess you consider it part of your, your marketing spend for the year, do you? Uh, you know, we are partner here for the World Economic Forum since more than 25 years. It is a very intense partnership and uh, we are quite happy to be here because a lot of our customers are here and uh, if they can use our chauffeur service, we keep them happy. Okay, now, you mentioned the chauffeur service, but I believe you've been testing your driverless cars recently. When are we going to see driverless cars ferrying VIPs around in Davos? I would say that uh, we are in a big uh, migration process. It will not be a big revolution, but it will be a strong evolutionary process, and um, we will see it probably in the next three to five years. Uh, there is coming up uh, a lot of good stuff, and uh, we will see. And uh, we see that the industry is uh, going towards uh, that technologies, like Google and others who are in the computing and processing world, and uh, Audi will be one of the pioneers. Okay, well, one question that does occur to me, particularly here in Davos with driverless cars, let's say, for example, Bill Gates is in one of your cars, it crashes due to a malfunction. Who gets sued? Are you worried that you end up getting sued every time one, a driverless <laughs> Audi crashes? You know, this is one of the big discussions we have because uh, there are a lot of stakeholders involved in the, into that process, governments, insurance companies and so on. And uh, what we would like to do is now to start with the discussions, to make them familiar with the technologies and uh, hopefully we come out with uh, very good solutions and the customer will drive that business. But there is a legal challenge as well as a technological challenge with driverless cars, That's is that fair? Yeah. yeah, you know, the smartphone industry has also uh, a big change behind them and uh, we see that probably regulators will follow soon. Okay, uh, broader issues, your rivalry with BMW and Mercedes. Uh, I think you've said you want to be number one among the three by the end of the decade. Mercedes having a bit of a renaissance though, it's a bit of a sales boost last year. Are you sticking to the end of the decade target? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because uh, all is related to product life cycles and uh, Audi has uh, really a, a good movement now in all the markets. So we are premium brand number one in China. We've sold more than, or roughly 500,000 cars a year. Uh, we have good movements and growth rates in the United States. We are very stable in difficult markets like in Western Europe. In Western Europe, in Europe as a whole, we are premium number one. And um, we see further growth in the United States, so the competition is on, and uh, we love to do that. Okay, well, of course, one thing you are doing in that respect is, is increasing your model range enormously. Is that getting tough to manage? I mean, is there a danger of uh, taking on too much? No, no, no. This is a big uh, management challenge. Uh, so we are investing in the next following years more than 22 billion euros. This is closer to 30 billion dollars in factories, in products, product enhancements, and in innovation and technologies. So uh, we will uh, increase our model range from today 49 models up to 60. And we see further growth in SUV segments, smaller SUVs, bigger SUVs, and um, technology and innovation will drive the business. How are you going to sell those cars? I mean, you, you can't fit 60-odd models in a tr traditional showroom. Are you, are you thinking about new sales models? Yeah, for sure. We are working on that. And uh, Audi City, like we exposed in London or in China now, and we will come with Audi City concepts uh, to, be, uh, to Berlin. We show and demonstrate how the modern configuration process uh, will have to happen, and we will scale it down on a dealer level. Dealer level. Uh, one specific model I wanted to ask about, you said in Detroit you were thinking about putting the R8 into production. Some talk that it's had to go back to the drawing board due to engineering disappointments. Uh, is it going into production and, and when? You are referring to the R8 e-tron, the mm -hmm. pure electric Sorry, car. Yes, the electric. And um, we uh, invested uh, a lot of brain power into that car. And uh, we ended up, uh, I would say, one year ago with a range of 240 kilometers and we said this is still not enough to come to the market. We worked further on on that project, and uh, we said in the first quarter, 2014, we communicate and we tell the public what we are going to do. Okay. And we would not say no. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some uh, good ingredients uh, for that car. Right, so when, when's it going to be on the market? Uh, this we will see, uh, at least with the successor. We will have uh, some uh, interesting stuff, but uh, wait some weeks. Uh, we said during the first quarter of uh, this year, we will tell you what we are going to do with the R8 e-tron, and we believe on the electrification of the cars.